You know, I said the other day, we're like April Fool's Day. Everything's the opposite. They want open borders so that people can flood our country. They come from insane asylums. They come from mental institutions. They come from prisons. They come from all sorts of places. We don't even know who they are. We don't even know what countries they're coming from. That's April Fool's. Who wants an open border? We want people to come into our country. Rudy understands that better than anybody, but they have to come in legally. The job you did in New York was so amazing. You don't get enough credit for it. They want high. That's very impressive, Rudy, by the way. They want high interest rates. They want high taxes. They want to quadruple your taxes. Now, that's April Fool's. Who ever heard? You know, when I was growing up, every politician would say, we are going to lower your taxes. They say, we are going to raise your taxes. And, and they don't, you know, look, they also want no voter ID because they want to cheat on elections. They don't want same-day voting. They don't want paper ballots. They never want any of that stuff because they want to cheat on elections, right? It's April Fool's. Who wants that? Who wants to cheat? Even 82 percent of Democrats want voter ID. They want voter ID. We want one-day elections. We want all paper ballots. We have to get back to it. You know, in France, in France, I recently had an election, and they used to have mail-ins, and they gave it up because it was so corrupt. Because once it, you know, it goes through everything. Some people get seven, eight ballots. But France gave it up. And they had an election, and they had 36 million people vote. At 10 o'clock, everybody knew who won. It was a one-day election. It was paper ballots. It was voter ID. They had a winner. They had a loser. And that was the end of it. It's so crazy. What's happening to our country? It's like April Fools, everybody. No voter ID, open borders, it's all crazy. High interest rates, high taxes. Within hours of my inauguration, I will cancel every Biden policy that is brutalizing Michigan auto workers. You know, it's amazing. When I was in the White House, I'd meet with a lot of the heads of the unions. And they loved me. I said, there's no way. We'd have lunch. I'd have five or six of them at a time, sometimes one or two. And they loved me. I said, there's no way. And then they go and they announce that they're going to support this guy that doesn't even know where the hell he is. He has no idea. And I said, I can't understand it. But we get the votes because the people understand it. The people understand. But I'll roll back Biden's ridiculous cafe standards, stop the assault on the internal combustion engine, which is what you do here. Unleash American energy and save tens of thousands of Michigan jobs from destruction, because you are heading toward a fall like nobody's ever seen before. And that's with this crazy policy they have for all electric. Under Biden, we have record high trade deficits, also known, in my opinion, as losses. We lose a fortune to China, to Japan, to all these countries. I renegotiated many of the deals. The rest of them were under consideration. But we made new deals with South Korea, with Japan. We made an unbelievable trade deal with China. They buy $50 billion worth of our product that they weren't buying. They didn't want to buy anything. The number was supposed to be $15 billion. And I said to my people, did you say 50 billion or 15? They said, sir, we said 15. I said, make it 50. And we got it. And it was great for manufacturers and great for farmers. But now I understand under the Biden administration, they're not living up to their agreement. Why should they? They have the goods on Biden. You understand that, right? They have the goods. He's not going to do anything. For this reason, I will also pass landmark legislation to be known as the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, so that if China or India or any country hits us with a 100, 200, or even 300 percent tax or tariff, the numbers are unbelievable how unfair it is. Anything like that, we will immediately, on all American goods, we will immediately hit them 
with tariffs and taxes that are exactly the same. So if they charge us 100 percent, we charge them 100 percent. You know, it's funny, I, I spoke to a senator that's not really a senator who's not really into business. He said, just so explain this to me. You're saying that if, let's say, India, and they really do a very big number on us, like Modi very much, I love the Indian people, but boy, do they take advantage of us on trade. So he said, so if India charges us 100 percent for a motorcycle, Harley Davidson, they're building plants now in India because they can't get them in because the tax is so high. It's so high, the tariff is just a disaster. So he said, if India charges us 100, we charge them 100, right? Is that what you're saying? I go, that's what I'm saying. He goes, you got my vote. You got my vote. But there are senators that won't approve it, and there are people that won't approve it. I had one senator from Pennsylvania. He left. He couldn't have won for a dog catcher, frankly. He's gone. He was a disaster to me. He was beautiful. I'd say, so listen, China's charging us 150 percent tax on something. Is it okay if I charge them 100? No, sir, that's not free trade. I said, well, but they're charging us, so let me ask you this. Could I charge 100? They're charging us 150. Senator, could I charge 100? No, sir. We want free and fair trade, sir. I said, this is not free and fair. This is — could I charge him 50? No, sir, you couldn't. Could I charge him? 25 or even 10 percent, like beggars. Could I be a beggar to give us — you charge us 150, we're going to charge you 10 percent. I was just doing it just to find out. He said, no, sir, it's not free and fair trade. Well, he's out of office now, Tommy, because he was stupid. He was stupid. He was horrible. That guy was horrible. He fought me on every damn thing. I would not give him an endorsement. I wouldn't give him — you know, our endorsement goes to 98, 99 percent. Lisa got my endorsement, I can tell you that. 99 percent. When we endorse, close to 99 percent of the people that we endorse win. I wouldn't endorse him, and he decided to retire. I've decided to leave office now. Now, these people, I don't know where the hell you find them, Tommy Tuberville. I don't know how you find them. Just out of curiosity, if China's charging us 100 percent, can we charge them 100 percent, Tommy Tuberville? Yes, we got one vote. That's why they love him in Alabama. But it's no wonder the swamp is getting truly desperate as they see us leading very big in the polls. I'm leading very, very big in the polls. In this week's just came out big village poll. We lead the field by 41 points. Very nice. 56 to 15 for De Sanctimonious. He's doing good. He's falling like a rock. People are getting to know him. They know he's got no personality. Got to have a little personality. Not much, but a little. And uh, we're leading big. In a recent CBS poll, which does not like me, we have 61 percent, and the Republicans are down to 11 or 12 or something. And in the new Harvard-Harris poll, doesn't love me. We're up by 45 points, leading 45 points. And it's been really amazing. In New Hampshire, we have a 47 percent lead over to Sanctimonious. The reason I call him that is he was dead in the water, couldn't have gotten elected. He came begging for my endorsement. I gave him the endorsement he won. Then they said, would you run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I said, that means he's running. This guy, we get him elected. Then he says, yes, I'd run. I don't know. They say loyalty doesn't matter in this business. What do you think, Rudy? I think loyalty matters a lot. I think it matters a lot. But we're leading Biden by a lot. In that same Harvard-Harris poll, Trump leads Biden 45 to 39. All other Republican candidates are losing to Biden, which is hard to believe, to be honest with you. This young man right here sitting in the front is uh, about 12 years old. He should be leading by 40 or 50 points. Any Anybody should be leading. It's horrible. Look, it was a rigged election. That's the only way they can win. These incredible poll numbers are one of the main reasons the Marxist left is weaponizing the criminal justice system to try and stop us. If I wasn't running or if I was doing badly in the polls, all of this investigation bullshit would stop immediately. Stop immediately.
And I did nothing wrong. It's under the Presidential Records Act. I did nothing wrong. Or the Clinton Sox case, which is just a reaffirmation of the Presidential Records Act. We did nothing. You know what the Clinton Sox case is? That's where Clinton, President Clinton, took out tapes and things of foreign leaders, very big deal, and he put them in his socks, and they found it in his sock drawer. So they call it the sock. And the judge, respected judge, ruled that he had the absolute right to have those things. And this was an affirmation. These were very, very big. That was a big deal at the time. The judge ruled in his favor. Two weeks ago, Joe Biden ordered his top political opponent to be arrested. That's me. I never learned about being arrested at the Wharton School of Finance. They didn't, they didn't, have, a they didn't have a class on arrest. We learned other things. We learned finance and things. We didn't learn about arrest. But arrested on fake and fabricated charges right in the middle of a presidential election in which Biden is losing by a lot. Can you imagine that? Sir, you're going to be arrested today. You're winning by 20 points. You're going to be arrested today. This is a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time, which began as I came down with our great future, then future First Lady, who people love. People love her. We came down the golden escalator in Trump Tower. Its primary purpose is a thing called election interference, but we will not let that happen. They did it in 2020. They're not doing it again. We're not going to allow it to happen. Every time the radical left, Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor and a badge of courage. I consider it great. Essentially, I'm being indicted for you, and I believe the you is more than 200 million people that love our country. I believe that strongly. Never forget, our enemies want to stop us because we are the ones and the only ones who can stop them. We're the only ones that can stop them. They want to stop us. They'll do anything they can. You know, they're vicious. If they would apply the same genius to making our country great, we would have no problem. I probably wouldn't have even run. But they don't. They want to destroy our country. Nobody can understand it. Nobody can understand why. If these corrupt persecutions succeed, they will complete their takeover of this country, and they will destroy your way of life and the United States of America forever. It will be forever destroyed. It will never be able to come back from that. That's why this is the most important election we've ever had. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I had such a nice life before. This was — I had the greatest life. But you know what? I would do it again. A lot of people say, would you do it again? I said, absolutely, because this country has such potential. We're going to make this country greater than ever before. Absolutely.